In the previous part we did the basic setup for future weather part of our forecast app. We've left some of the things undone, so we are going to finish them in this part. We will also build the view model layer of the future list weather in order to prepare for the next part where we will build the actual recycler view displaying the future weather entries. Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. So right off the bat, let's fix some things which I didn't do in the previous part, for which I apologize. Piotr Serafin noticed that I didn't add the DAO annotation, so thanks for reminding me on GitHub. So let's add, add DAO annotation for our future where DAO, which we created in the previous part. And then let's also go to our forecast database. And over there, we need to add our future weather entry class over to the entities. So right after current weather entry, we are going to add future weather entry and get its class. Then we are also going to fix location provider implementation, which is under the provider package. So let's jump right over there. And here, Eke Koseoglu, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, or Koseoglu, Notice that has custom location changed is not implemented really properly. So let's go to has custom location changed and we need to change this code to something else. What we need to do here is to wrap this current code inside an if statement, which will say that if we are not using device location, then we want to continue in the code which we had here even previously. And that actually makes sense because the custom location cannot change if we are not using it. If we are using device location, then custom location has to remain unchanged. And that can be done by returning false whenever we are using device location. And the last fix, which was also found by Eke Koseoglu, is over in forecast repository implementation. And over there, when you take a look at init weather data, here we are getting the last weather location from our weather location DAO, but we are getting it as get location, and this returns live data. And Eke Koseoglu found out that whenever something returns live data, that is not really synchronous. So if we call the value getter right after we get the location as live data, this value will be basically always null. This will be null even though there is some real data in the database. However, if we get that data as live data and as soon as we get it, we call the value getter, as I said, it's going to be just null. So we have two ways of fixing it. Eke Koseoglu himself found another way of fixing it. So you can check it out in the pull request on GitHub, which I denied because I need to do it on video, but I'm going to take another approach and go right over to where location DAO. And practically I'm going to copy this get location function and paste it below. But instead of live data, we will return only normal weather location, which will be nullable. And let's name this function to something like get location non live. Now, because we are no longer returning live data, but a normal object of type weather location, we are now going to encounter the same problem that it's null at the start. So now we can go to our forecast repository and change this call to get location to be get location non live. And we can get rid of this value because there is no value on the weather location object and we are good to go now. So really thanks to all of you who contributed your code to enhance the application and to fix bugs. And definitely if you find some bugs, let me know on the GitHub repository. And also this is something what happens if you are not doing test driven development and my future tutorials will be done in test driven development, although I am probably not going to show you the test driven part in on camera because uh, that's quite long, but at least the code will be tested before I write it. All right, so once we have these bugs fixed, let's add the new functionality because we need to add some way into the forecast repository to fetch the future weather. So first let's modify the interface of forecast repository 
and we are going to add a few functions in here. Actually, we will add only one function and it will look like this. And also you can get the code from the link in the video description. So its name is get future weather list. It's a suspend function. We pass it a start date from which we want to fetch the start the fetching of the future weather entries. And we return live data, which contains a list of unit specific simple future weather entries. Now we can go over to forecast repository implementation. And over at the top of this class, we can see that we have an error because we are not overriding a function from the interface. So we are going to do just that right now. Under get current weather, we are going to override suspend fun get future weather list. In order to implement this function, we are also going to need future weather DAO inside the forecast repository implementation. So let's add it right here, private val future weather DAO of type future weather DAO needs to be here. And now what we can do here is to return with context, also dispatchers.io and then we want to init weather data just like in get current weather and then we want to return at with context and if we need to return metric so if the view model requests metric data so if metric we are going to return future weather DAO dot get simple weather forecasts metric and the start date is the date which is passed to this function and otherwise so else we are going to return the same so let's copy this line but we are going to return rather get simple imperial also in the init block we are not yet persisting the future weather which is fetched from the weather network data source so let's do just that we are going to copy whatever is after the downloaded current weather because we are going to introduce an apply block so that we don't have to repeat ourselves by calling and writing out the weather network data source twice. So weather network data source dot apply, we can paste the block which we have just cut from there right into this apply block. And then we are going to paste it once more, but now we are not going to operate on downloaded current weather, but rather on downloaded future weather. And this will be new future weather. And in just a bit, we are going to create a function which will be named persist fetched future weather. And over there, we also want to pass new future weather. So let's create a function like that right now, right under persist fetched current weather. So under here, again, if you want to get the code from this tutorial, you can do so by clicking on the link in the video description, which is going to take you to resocoder.com. But I'm going to explain everything properly. But let's first import our future weather response here. So what are we doing over here? Just as in persist fetch current weather, we are also launching a global scope coroutine over here on the dispatchers IO. Here, we first need to delete alt forecast data, which is a local function. So it's a function nested within another function. And we delete all forecast data whenever we are persisting newly fetched future weather data, because we just don't want to keep something we don't need because you don't need the forecast for the weather, which is already like in the past. So here we just get whatever the date is today by calling local date now. And then we simply delete alt entries from by calling future weather DAO delete alt entries. And this function was created in the previous tutorial. And after we have deleted alt forecast data, we get the entries from the fetched weather future weather response. Then we insert new entries into the future weather table inside the database. And also we update the last location from which we have fetched the data by calling weather location DAO that upsert and we upsert the newly fetched location. Now this is all nice, but we also need to modify init weather data because we need to add some code which will operate on the future weather entries. 
So also if we haven't yet fetched anything or if the location has changed, we in addition to fetching current weather also want to fetch future weather. We are going to create this function in just a little while. And also if is fetch future needed, we're also going to call fetch future weather even from this if statement. So fetch future weather is pretty much identical to fetch current weather only instead of current weather we are fetching future weather obviously so we call weather network data source fetch future weather we pass it the preferred location string from our location provider and we also get the default language of the phone and while inside the is fetch current needed we are returning true whenever the 30 minute interval has passed inside is fetch future needed we are going to do it a bit differently so first let's import the forecast days count constant from the weather network data source implementation which is basically a value of 7. So here we are getting the today's date and then we count the future weather entries which are present inside the database after and including the today's date. If those future weather entries that are there are in count less than 7 we return true. So if there are only six weather entries inside the database, we are going to return true. So new fetching will commence. All right, so now we have the repository done. So we can jump over to the view model, concretely future list weather view model. It's going to need private val forecast repository and also private val unit provider. And basically it's going to have a lot of similar functionality that the current weather view model has. It's going to need is metric and also weather location. And practically the only thing that will be different is this weather because we are now going to obviously get current weather but rather get future weather list. This tells us that we need some kind of an abstraction, so some kind of a base class for our current weather and also the future weather view models. So let's create that right now. We are going to create that class under the base package under UI. So let's create a new Kotlin class, weather view model. It's pretty simple and also you can get the code from the link in the video description. It's an abstract class which gets also forecast repository and unit provider, just like the current weather view model gets these two things also. And then it has unit system and also is metric unit and weather location. So now we can get rid of these things inside the current weather view model directly. So let's delete uh, unit system and is metric. And let's also delete uh, weather location. And the base class will no longer be a normal view model, but rather weather view model. And we need to pass in the forecast repository and also the unit provider. And also there is a bit of a difference in the nomenclature, so we no longer can get is metric, but is metric unit. And I also like to call super here so that it's clear that it comes from the super class. Although you not, don't need to do this, but it really just clears things out a bit. All right, so now we can do basically the same thing inside the future list weather view model. We are going to inherit from weather view model and pass in forecast repository and also the unit provider, which no longer needs to be a private val, but only a normal parameter. And we are going to have one lazy property here, which will be val weather entries. It will be gotten by lazy deferred. And here we are going to call forecast repository dot get future weather list and pass in whatever the date is now. So local date dot now and also pass in the super that is metric unit. But what kind of a view model would this be if it didn't have the view model factory? So let's add it right now under the list package future list weather view model factory. Wow, that's a mouthful. And I'm really not going to bore you here. It's the same thing all over again. We just pass in the same stuff that we pass into the view model itself, but it's a factory and then we have a create function which returns the actual view model. So let's import things over here and we will be good to go. 
Now the only thing left to do for us here in this part, because in the next part we are going to build the actual recycle view and the UI, so XML and all of that stuff. But in this tutorial we are gonna finish here, but first let's do some dependency injection setup so that in the next part we can just jump right in and write the fragment code and we'll be good to go. So inside the forecast application we are going to bind future weather DAO, so let's uh, copy and paste below this line which binds current weather DAO and we are going to change it to future. And then also just like we are binding current weather view model factory, we are also going to bind future weather view model factory. So future list weather view model factory. And also let's not forget about forecast repository implementation, which needs another instance of the future weather DAO. So let's write another instance call here. And now we are really good to go. And that's it for this tutorial. If you don't want to miss more tutorials like this and also the next part in which we will be building the actual UI which the user will be able to see, definitely subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you are not really going to miss any of my new videos. If this tutorial helped you with implementing the view model layer of our future weather stuff in this forecast app, give it a like and also share it. Also, sorry if there are any microphone distortions during the course of this tutorial and also previous parts of this tutorial series. That's because Android Studio is so power heavy that it just maxes out my CPU, which is uh, Intel Core i5-6500. So it's not like uh, all that weak of a CPU, but Android Studio is just so such a power hog, CPU hog and a RAM hog that I don't know what it does, but it just maxes out the CPU and uh, my recording software just cannot process all of that stuff at once, so it needs to choose and it chooses to just cut out the microphone. So yeah, that's where those pesky stutterings of the microphone are coming from. This doesn't happen with VS Code, but Android Studio is just a beast, an optimized ugly beast. Anyway, if you have anything to say, leave it in the comments and also follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and see you in the next video.